Your Honor, there is a suspect, one lone suspect. Uh, well, this is certainly interesting news. Very well, Mr. Wright. Who's your suspect? V v v oh, my hands are shaking. V what? Von Karma. Von Karma. Uh, ah! <laughs> Uh, a hush falls over the, the jury. You mean the Von Karma, the prosecutor, the one standing right over there? Bah! You! You don't object? Ha! I see no need. Why honor this ridiculous outburst with my objections? Because you took a vacation for several months starting the day after that incident. Yet you pride yourself on a perfect record. Why do you take such a long vacation without any reason? So you're claiming that I took a vacation to heal my injury from the incident. Fascinating. Prove it. I would have needed surgery, no? Where did I go under the knife at, Mr. Wright? Bring the doctor that operated on me. Have him testify. Nah, he didn't get an operation Ugh. at all. Nick! Let's find out who his doctor is. It's no use. E Edgeworth? I know Von Karma perhaps too well. He's perfect. He wouldn't leave clues. He probably didn't undergo surgery. He'll leave a doctor as a witness. <laughs> God, nobody's that perfect. So, so what, Nick? Did Von Karma pull the bullet out by himself? That's insane! No, he couldn't have. You can't just pull bullets out of yourself. Wait, what does that mean? That bullet has to be somewhere, but where? <laughs> well, Mr. Wright. Can you produce evidence to prove I was shot? Yeah! All right, Von Karma. I mean, you could always ask him to take off his clothes, but I'll that's not it. gonna... <laughs> I'll even use this evidence. I know how much... how you like it so much. What? The evidence that proves Von Karma is shot is... The metal detector. I mean, a good scar would have done it too, on... but whatever. Von Karma's perfect. You wouldn't risk surgery, leaving it an evidence trail. So then, I ask, where's that bullet now? I think it's unlikely that Von Karma performed surgery on himself. Ah! You... you don't mean... I do. There is the possibility that the bullet is still inside Von Karma. Is that even possible, for all these years? Well, there's one way to find out. We could use this metal detector that I've been keeping in my back pocket somehow. <laughs> well, Von Karma, I'm gonna run this over you and see what we find. Look, he's even gripping his shoulder. I refuse! You refuse? But refusing this means... You acknowledge that the bullet is still inside you. Order! 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 Your Honor, the defense requests that we be allowed to use the metal detector. Judge, I call for a suspension of this trial. This is an invasion of privacy. The statute of limitations runs out on this case today. It was you who said that we had to end this right here, right now. Enough. I permit the use of the metal detector. Mr. Von Karma, you will submit yourself to testing. Nick, what does this mean? I don't know, but we have to give it a shot. That is pretty much the theme of this entire game. Mm-hmm. There it goes. It reacted. Something's inside his right shoulder. The bullet. Mr. Von Karma. Mm. You. It was you. Ugh. I was afraid this might- this would happen. And so I remained silent. Hmm? Indeed, there is a bullet in my shoulder. However, there's nothing to do with the incident. What? It, I was shot in the shoulder long before the DL6 incident. I claim that the bullet in my shoulder has no relation to DL6. Well, we could cut it out of you and compare the ballistics. But, but Mr. Von Karma, can you prove that? Prove? I have no obligation to prove anything. It is Mr. Wright who must prove something here, not I. Mr. Wright? Well, can you prove it? Can you prove that the bullet in Von Karma's shoulder was from DL6? Of course he can't. You don't have any kind of- any of the DL6 evidence. Oh, well, we do have the old bullet. That's because you took it out of the records room yesterday. 
But he doesn't know that. With no proof, you cannot convict me of any crime. So sorry, Mr. Wright. No, I'm the one who's sorry, Mr. Karma. What? You were close, one day away from freedom. But you see, I have proof. What? Who'd have thought you would dig your own grave by trying to convict Edgeworth? I can link that bullet in your shoulder to the DL6 incident. And here's my final proof. The old bullet. Polly! No, 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 not Polly. <laughs> the old bullet. DL6 bullet. That's a bullet. Where did you get that? This is the bullet used in the DL6 incident. This is taken from the heart of the victim, Mr. Gregory Edgeworth. The bullet is preserved quite nicely, with all the ballistic markings intact. Ballistic markings. You may recall the term. It came up in the first trial two days ago. Ballistic markings are the fingerprints of a weapon. All bullets fired from a gun are marked with that weapon's unique pattern. By examining the markings, you can tell which weapon fired the bullet. It's quite accurate. We have two bullets in our possession. One, the bullet removed from Gregory Edgeworth's heart. The other, Mr. Von Karma, is the bullet buried in your shoulder. We could analyze both bullets. Then, if the markings matched, we would know that both bullets have been fired from the same gun. The very same pistol. In other words, the murder weapon that killed Gregory Edgeworth. <laughs> Mr. Von Karma, you'll let us remove the bullet from your shoulder. Then we'll compare the ballistic markings to those on this bullet. And solve this case once and for all. Well, Mr. Von Karma... I'm so glad we're in a house, not an apartment. That scream. I've heard that scream before. It's the... Wait. I know. Help! I can't breathe! Quiet, I said quiet. You're not making this any easier. Stop breathing my air! I'll, I'll stop you! Stop breathing my air! Get away! Get away from my father! It's that scream I heard in the elevator, 15 years ago. Von Karma, it was you who screamed! Mr. Von Karma! Where are the Edgeworth? Edgeworth! Only you could identify me! So it was you. You and your father are my curse! Your father shamed me with the penalty on my record. And you, you left a scar on my perfect shoulder that would never fade. I'll, I'll bury you, I'll bury you with my bare hands! Death, death! 15 years earlier. Chief Prosecutor, I'm sorry. Von Karma, it's not... Like you... Oh wait, no. Was this Edgeworth? Sorry. No, 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 no. So this was 15 years ago. And... I didn't check who was saying this. Oh, I... it was it was someone else. I, in the I think court. it was. I think it was Gregory Edgeworth. No, no, no. It was someone else. It was. It's not the... like you to make this kind of error. I never would have thought that Edgeworth would be the one to catch you. Oh. I, I was careless. I'm. S I... Oh, I'm sorry, but you will have to be penalized. I've covered for you in the past, but not this time. Ugh. Edgeworth! It was a shock like none I'd ever known. Me! Penalized! It took hours for me to regain my composure. Suddenly I found myself in the darkness. I was in the court records room. I must have wandered in there without thinking where I was going. The room was pitch black. The lights must have gone out. I went out into the hall and felt my way to the elevator. I pressed the button, but nothing happened. Then... There was a noise. I was in pain, a horrible burning pain in my shoulder. Just then the lights came back on, the elevator door opened before my eyes. I saw three people inside, 
all lying unconscious from oxygen deprivation. Much to my surprise, a pistol lay at my feet. I knew then, it was my destiny. I guess I lost his accent somewhere along the way, but oh well. Mm -hmm. In his last moments, Gregory Edgeworth was still unconscious. He died, never knowing who had shot him. Later, he spoke through a medium, blaming Mr. Yogi. He was fooled. It was the perfect crime. Who would have thought another man would have come to open that elevator door? Judge! What? What are you doing? Do your job! Bring an end to this miserable charade. Now! End it! Very well! It appears that we have come to a very come a very long way to the end of this maze. Fifteen years later. Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor. You were innocent. You are innocent. As you said, it was all a nightmare. Yes, Your Honor. This court finds the defendant, Mr. Miles Edgeworth. Not guilty. Glad we reloaded that thing. <laughs> it takes a while. It's like 15 minutes. It's kind of a pain in the ass. I have like an automated feeder tube or something. That is all. This court is adjourned. Are they immediately going to put... Karma on trial? Or is he just going to be carted off to jail? He'll probably carted confessed? off. December 28th, 5.38pm. District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 2. Nick! Nick, we did it! Did you see his face? Von Karma looked even paler than usual. He's pretending to be all cool, but inside you crushed him, Nick. Crushed! I gotta say, I'm impressed. Heh, <laughs> it was pretty close, though. I was sure we had it. We'd had it. I know! I was on the verge of tears the whole time myself. But now... It's all just a good memory. Uh, so it's finally over, Edgeworth. Uh, right. Yeah? I... I'm not sure how to say this. I know! I know! Try... Thank you. I... I see. <laughs> Thank <laughs> really? you, right. <laughs> you're welcome. Really? You're going to make it that difficult for him to show gratitude? Yes. I think you could have done better than that. Mm, <laughs> Can't even... Sorry. I'm not good at this sort of thing. <laughs> You've got a lot to learn, Edgeworth. She's got you there. Whoop! Amazing, pal. You pulled through just like I thought you would. I never- I'll never forget this. I owe you one, pal. And tonight, let's party. Dinner's on me. Yeah, my salary went down a bit this month. But who cares? See, Mr. Edgeworth? You should take a lesson from Detective Gumshoe. That's how you say thank you. Hmm. I- I see. <laughs> oh! Uh, I- I feel foolish. Don't worry. Take it, uh, a little at a time. You'll get used to it. It's been 15 years since I've seen Edgeworth this unguarded. Oh no, Lada, what is she doing around here? Hey, y'all! Lada! Oh, we're great in there! Thank you. Yo, Edgeworth, congrats! Uh, thank y'all very much. I knew you were an innocent from the start, of course. Just look at you. You wouldn't stick your hand in the cookie jar even if no one was there. You were the witness on the first day of the trial, weren't you? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, uh, let bygones be got bygones, eh? Speaking of which, what are you doing now, Lana? Who? Me? Aw, oh, I went back to college. In a day? I gave up trying to be an investigative photographer re pretty quick. Really? Quick. That's yeah. too bad. Huh? Huh? 
Isn't that the hot dog guy from the park? Huh? It's over, Nick! My life is over! Why the sad face, Larry? What happened now? Oh, Nick, not, I'm not long for this world! What did Kian say, uh, or what, what happened? You don't look sick. It's Kian say she, she's gonna live in Paris! Paris, Nick! She's leaving me behind! Aww. I should have seen that coming. Yo, Edgy! There you are! Um, yes, here I am. Congrats, Edgy! Here, little gift from me in celebration. Celebration? That's unusual for you. It's $38. Uh, that's what I'm, yeah. Harry Butts, you're coming along tonight too. My treat, pal. Huh? Uh, thanks. Looking forward to it. Yo, yo, Nick. That's the suit that questioned me. When he says treat, that's not please talk for prison food, right? Right? Uh, I think you'll be fine, Larry. Right? Yeah, what's up? That envelope that Larry gave me, it's got money in it. Well, yeah, that's not strange. People give money away to celebrate sometimes. It's $38, right? Huh, what a weird amount. I mean, it's not a little, but it's not a lot either. $38 exactly. N -n Nick, wasn't that exactly the amount of lunch money that was stolen from Mr. Edgeworth in school? $38? No. No, Larry, it was you? What are you so surprised about, right? Huh? Larry was absent that day from school, right? But that doesn't automatically rule him out as a suspect. What? Think back to that day, 15 years ago. Larry took the day off, but he was bored, so he came into school anyway. And he saw the money lying there, and the rest is history. I was never that good at history. <laughs> Edgeworth, you didn't know, did you? I suspected. I just couldn't picture Larry protecting you like he did that day. Everyone else was saying you did it. The whole class was against you, remember? Yeah, too well. Right, you may not know this, but we used to have a saying back in school. When something smells, it's usually the bugs. I know, I know. I use it often. Really right. I'm surprised you didn't figure it out. Well, this sure is an unexpected turn of events, eh? Edgeworth? Hmm? Huh? You should have told me. Now, now, Nick, it was 15 years ago. Don't you think the statute of limitations has run out, Mr. Edgeworth? I'd say so, yes. There you have it. Ah, where does that leave me? I became a defense attorney because of what you two did. Well, you've always been something of an insufferable emotionalist. Yeah, and you get worked up too easily too. To death, the death sentence for the both of you. Man, if only I'd known I've become a prosecutor. The same goes for me, only the other way around. For the longest time, I thought that I might have killed my own father. I thought I might be a criminal. I became a prosecutor in part to punish myself. If I'd have known the truth, I might have become a defense attorney after all. Edgeworth, wanna switch right? Hey y'all! That, that'd be cute. Line up! I'll take a photo! Hey, photo time! Let's go! And after that, dinner on me! Detective Gumshoe took us out on the town that night. We celebrated Edgeworth's newfound freedom. Even though Edgeworth himself was still in detention. December 29th, 5.02 a.m., Wright & Co. Law Offices. Oh, I went a little overboard yesterday. My head hurts. Huh? It's only five. Maybe I should go back to sleep. Huh? What's this? A letter? Good morning, Nick. You were really impressive yesterday. Seeing you... It made me think about what I'm doing here. I'm a spirit medium. In training, of course. I wanted to help Mr. Edgeworth, too. I wanted to help you. But I couldn't. I was useless. So, I decided to go back to my training. I'll become a full-fledged spirit medium, for starters. I couldn't say it to your face, so I left this letter. Goodbye, Nick. 
Good goodbye. What time is it? Gah! The first trains for the mountains have already left to the station. I guess I'm too late. Uh, hey, N Nick. Maya. Uh. Ah. Uh. Hmm. So you're leaving? Yeah. It's hard being a spirit medium who can't talk to spirits. And I think you'll do fine without me, Nick. Be good, okay? Wait! What? I never could have saved Edgeworth without your help. Huh? On the last day of the trial, I heard her. I heard Mia's voice. You heard my sister? Yeah, only her voice, but still. It was at the very end when I thought we'd lost everything. Well, that's my sister for you. Detective Gumshoe helped, and Mr. Grossberg, and even Larry. I'm the only one who couldn't help. I was useless, Nick. But you were the one who stopped Von Karma, Maya. Huh? I... I didn't do anything! All I did was wander around in a daze. Sorry, but I have evidence that you helped. Evidence? Show Maya some evidence to cheer her up. I mean, it. What? <laughs> Polly? I mean, that's true. She did. Uh, so sorry, Nick. I guess I don't understand. <laughs> I, it, it. She really did help. Like, that's the annoying part. She helped figure out with Polly and the safe and everything. It's going to be the bullet. Polly, the safe. She stole the bullet. She was the one that uh, stopped Von Karma in the very beginning. Like, she did a lot. Anyway. A, a bullet? Von Karma was convinced he had taken all of the ed evidence pertaining to DL6. But you were the one who rescued the last piece of evidence we needed. This was the bullet that put an end to Von Karma. And you were the one who gave it to me. Nick. Thanks, Maya. I couldn't have done it without you. Hmm. I'll be back soon. Huh? I'm going to complete my training, and I'll come back. Okay. I'll be waiting. <laughs> Of course you will. You can't run that office by yourself. You're hopeless. Uh, I don't know about that. Hmm? So, this is it. See you soon, Maya. Thanks, Nick. So my story ends. Time to turn a new page and say goodbye to the novice defense attorney that I once was. Now a new story begins with the same old crazy cast of characters. Ah, don't think you've graduated yet, amateur. Mr. Wright, perhaps you'd like to rethink that claim. Uh, yes, your honor. Uh oh, I got a bad feeling about this. We still have one more case, though. Was it the DLC case? Oh. Hey, pal. Mr. Edgeworth came down to the precinct to wish me a happy new year. Talk about a pleasant surprise. Whoop. Detective Gumshoe. <laughs> and then he hung his head low and went right back outside. <laughs> kind of like he was embarrassed or something. Strange, huh? I'm a little disappointed. I'm pretty sure Edgeworth doesn't really show up as much in the later games, but it could be wrong. Aww. But, like, it would be really cute if it was, like, Phoenix and... Oh, one second. Huh? Nick? Nah, I haven't seen him lately. Who, me? I've been working at a cheese shop. That Missy's a nice lady, but she's not exactly what you call a cheap date. Aww. Huh? Oh, she's in Hawaii right now. Yeah. Poor butts. Um... But, like, I don't know. I think it would have actually been really charming to have a game where, like, it's Edgeworth and Phoenix next to each other. Oh, right? Yeah, I remember him. I hear he's been busy lately. 
You know, not to ring at my own bell, but I sort of taught him everything he knows. I'm sure he's grateful. <laughs> perjury. Bald-faced, bald-headed perjury. Balding-headed. It's not, he's not all gone yet. Phoenix Wright, hmm. Ah, the defense attorney for whom I wrote that affidavit, yes. Oh, you should know, I've taken over the management of the Gatewater Hotel. Should you be in the area, please stop by. Oh, Grossberg. Ahem, Grossberg. Ahem. Oh, it's you. Phoenix Wright. Ah, oh, yes, Mia's un understudy, was he not? I wonder how he's doing. Hasn't, haven't seen him as of late. Ah, the days of my youth, like the scent of a fresh lemon, freshly squeed off, uh, squeezed off of a Vaughn Karma. <laughs> mm. <laughs> we have a command <laughs> for lemons. Phoenix Wright! Is he an actor? Well, I'm not buying it. You can start my show. I didn't you know that finally on DVD, one of the box set, and I know that it's a DVD or why everything I'm ever supposed to be done. <laughs> I just want the credits to like, we hit the end of the credits and he's just like pouring in his office. I'm pleased to announce that something. I'm uh, sure Princess that Mr. King Wright Princess. is a great deal. Oh, and I'm keeping my face out of the public eye till the show's over. I wouldn't want to ruin any kid's dreams, you know? He was, I think he was in the, the Pink Princess. Yeah. Show. That's what he was well, saying. Well, he is Pink Princess, probably. Uh huh, that's hilarious. Oh, I got a letter from Maya the other day. It sounds like she caught a cold standing under a waterfall. I wanted to visit, but didn't have time, so I sent her some Pink Princess trading cards. She says she can't buy them where she is. What kind of place is she living at anyway? Under a waterfall. In the mountains. They don't really sell paper products under waterfalls. <laughs> right? Who's that? You want to talk? Let's talk Pink Princess, all right? But, you know, I snuck into the studio the other day. And I saw her. The one inside the Pink Princess suit. What a dog. It was kind of a shock for a boy my tender age. Because <laughs> it was powers. Probably, yeah. He wanted to get like... Yeah, I remember right. That lawyer guy. Well, uh, me, I'm training to become a paranormal... What? I know, I know the picture I took of everyone. Well, just behind them, there's a ghost. For real. Now that's talent. I'm gonna be famous. Mia. But yeah, the kid wanted to get a, a peep shot. Maybe it's Mia, or it's, maybe- It's Mia. Aww. Why? Did you think it was Edgeworth's Edgeworth's dad? father? Or, you know, it's definitely Mia. Victory! <laughs> he does have the basket of confetti. He does have confetti. <laughs> you know, I'm suddenly head canoning it that it's actually just um, Gumshoe standing there with the confetti whenever it's not guilty or guilty. Aww. A brand new episode has been added, but wait, why does that look like a hipper version of Mia and Maya? And Lofty. A dark Lofty. The poop demon is returned! <laughs> it's the sign of the apocalypse! Is this an alternate reality thing, or what's the no. deal? No, okay, so this is a sort of, but mostly non-canonical -can uh, episode that was added for the DS to show off the uh, new features that they could do with the DS tech. Cause, but why does it look like Mia and Maya, but with different hair colors and eye colors and outfits? Uh, I don't remember either of their names. It's an extra game. The girl is actually a prosecutor in the Apollo Justice series. Right, because Apollo Justice, he Apollo Justice was the is that like the sequel e series to Phoenix Wright? Yeah, Ride? so you have the first three Phoenix Wright games, and then there's like three Apollo Justice games, I believe. She's a forensic detective. Um, I see. Now, Apollo Justice is the one that has the two little things on top of his head. I believe so, yeah. It is canon. One of the characters shows up in Games 4 and onwards. Yeah, no, I, I know it's canon, but it's kind of like it doesn't matter for the remaining three. Because I believe the, the Phoenix Wright trilogy was made before this episode. 
Um, which is kind of interesting, too, because there's a massive uptick in quality between the previous ones and this one, in terms of, like, the investigation and, like, a lot of other stuff. Um, so we're probably going to play it before we go on to the next game, right? Correct. We will we will play this one before we touch any of the other ones, because I remember this one was really good. Like, the Von Karma one, I was kind of on the edge of the seat. This one was nuts. I, re um, I recall being, like, really, like, into it. Are we going to start it, or are we going to stop for tonight? Uh, we should stop for the night. I mean, the, I we're not going to get very far into it if I mm -hmm. actually, like, no, that's was true. to say yes. But also, I'm tired. We got woken up at 6, and if I want to do anything tomorrow. Wait. It's starting, though? It's starting anyway. It's fine. We'll just kind of leave this as a preview for the next episode, where we'll see it again. <gasps> oh, no. Like I said, they're showing off a little bit. Wait. But yeah, it's also the longest chapter in any Phoenix Wright game. It's really long. I, I think I spent an entire train ride on this one. Mm -hmm. Or maybe an entire train ride on the, the chapters 4 and 5. I don't know. But yeah, this one is considerably longer than any of the others. Anywho, I'm going to save again, even no, if it doesn't no, matter. Don't save. Oh, right. Probably shouldn't. Yeah, rise from the ashes. Okay, we're good. Perfect. Anyway, this was really fun. I mm -hmm. like this game a lot. It, Ace Attorney, Pyre, and a couple other games have ruined visual novels for me because they're so much better than like most visual novels. And it makes me mad. But I'm glad to be playing Phoenix Wright because it's really enjoyable. Anyway. <sighs> I need bed. Good night. Good night, guys.